Now that we have everything unboxed, I like to take my metal and I like to stage it somewhere inside my shower. Um, you're gonna have your larger screws. Those are your number eight by one and a half screws. You're gonna have four of the number six by three eight screws. You're gonna have a, a guide. You're gonna have your wall anchors. You're gonna have your bumpers with the set screws to hold those in place. Well, first of all, we're going to put this in the center, right where we want it to be, and measure off of the front. Put a reference line right there. That way when we mount this side, we'll get it exactly so we have a straight reveal coming across the front of our curb. Once we have that marked, we're gonna use a level and put our wall jam up plumb. And you really wanna get this part straight because if your door is not plumb, it's gonna give you some problems when you go to roll it. And so um, just get in there as close as you can. You're gonna mark, you're gonna have three holes on your wall jam. You're gonna mark those holes. And then we are gonna go ahead and mount this wall jam first. We're gonna drill three 3 16 holes. We're gonna use a 3 16 masonry drill bit. Uh, this will go through tile, it'll go through um, heck, it'll go through fiberglass, whatever you need to, and then we're going to use an anchor inside of our hole that we can use to hold our screw into place. So now that I have those holes marked, or we have the marks where our hole's going to be, I'm going to go ahead and drill these out. All right, we're going to take our wall anchors. We're going to put these in the holes. We're going to tap them in with a hammer and this is what's going to hold our screw in place. <clears throat> Before we mount this permanently onto the wall, um, if you're using a tile or a marble application and you're going to have a caulk joint or a seam or a grout line here, I always like to take a little bit of silicone and just apply it right there where it's going to fit because silicone is just going to give you another little barrier. Um, grout is not always the best thing to keep water where it belongs. It's absorbent and water will get through it. Uh, if you've got a fiberglass stall that's a one piece acrylic or something like that, you don't need to do this because it's all one piece and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, now that we have our holes in place and our silicone down at the bottom, we're going to go ahead and mount our uh, wall jam. What we're using here are the number eight by one and a half inch screws. We're gonna put them in the top, the bottom, and on the middle. Okay. And there we go. Those are all mounted in there the way we want them. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is take our measurement. We got one and a half inches. And we're gonna come back over here at one and a half inches. Remember, when we're done with this, we want our reveal to be the same all the way across. Okay, so we're gonna set it right there. We're gonna get our level. And we are going to mount this plumb. Make sure we're on our line. And we are Good to go. Once that's done, we're gonna repeat just like we did on the other side here. We're gonna drill three holes, three sixteenths, into there. We're gonna use our anchors and our screws and we're gonna caulk down here in the corner before we apply the jam. Okay, now that we have both wall jams in place, the next thing we're gonna do is measure and cut our header. Okay, my measurement was 46 and a sixteenth. I'm going to make my cut at 45 and 15 16 strong. I've got 45 and 15 16 strong. Okay, now that we have this cut, we're going to 
mount it up on top. What you got to do is just pull it right down on top of your wall jams. Make sure you've got a good seat and it's not sitting in twisted in any way. We have a good seat there. Uh, you want to center it into your opening. So you've got basically a strong 16th reveal on both sides. Okay, now that I have my header in place, I'm going to secure it down. I'm going to drill two holes, one on each side, through my header into my wall jam on the inside. We're going to anchor them with two of your number six by three eighths inch screws. And as always, when we're screwing metal to metal, we always use a number 31 drill bit. Okay, now we have our header anchored and the next thing we can do is install our glass. Obscure glass comes smooth on one side, it's textured on the other. You always want to install your glass when it's obscure with the smooth side towards the shower on the inside. Okay, the inside panel always goes on first and it always goes toward the shower head. On this particular shower stall, we do not have a shower head, so we're going to pretend like the shower head's to the right. Remember, this is a frameless door, and you do not want to set your glass on any type of tile or concrete. You can set it on carpet, you can set it on a hardwood floor, but if you hit it on tile or concrete, you are going to break the glass, so you have to be careful at this stage. For this next step, you're going to need to make sure your rollers are tightened to your brackets. Your instruction guide is going to say to use a quarter inch box end wrench and that's fine. I use a quarter inch nut driver. That works better for me. And so either one's going to work okay. The first thing you just put it right there and just make sure that your rollers are tightened down. Otherwise they're going to slip on you and you're going to have a problem. Now, take it, get it close to the frame and you're going to slip it up and carefully set it on the track. You're going to set it on the inside track. Your rollers are facing toward the inside of your shower door. Now the inside panel always goes against the shower head and our shower head is on the right. So what we're going to do is look right here and make sure we have a good reveal going down. Now I want you to get a good picture of this. As you can see here, I have a quarter inch space down at the bottom and I am sitting flush at the top. So I have got to adjust this door so that the bottom comes toward your wall jam. So once I know that I need to adjust my bottom in towards the jam, I'm going to carefully remove the door and I can either lower this side of the glass to slide it over or I can raise this side of the glass to slide it over. They will both achieve the same purpose. In this case I think I would rather lower the door and it's going to sound a little backwards but to lower the door you actually have to raise the roller. Okay we're going to give it a, another try here. Put it back up on the rollers and slide it in there and that is perfect. Okay now just remember you might have to do this two or three times to get it exactly the way you want it to sit in there. Um, once you get the first one in we're just going to slide it over to the right and we're going to grab the next panel. On the outside door, your rollers are going to be facing away from the shower. Once again, smooth side to the end, rough side out. I'm going to tighten my rollers. When we bring it in, we're going to be putting it on the front track. And we're going to test our fit. And actually on this one, we've got a very good fit, so I don't have to do any adjusting.
Okay, the next step in our process is to install our bumpers. You're gonna have two bumpers identical. I like to start with the inside glass first. Now the way we install this, we're gonna have a hole that sits in our bumper. Our screw is gonna slip into that hole and it'll come through on this side right here. Our bumpers are designed, they're gonna have a slot on one side, a screw on the other. The glass is actually gonna fit into your slot. When we mount this, we're gonna put it on the door. You're gonna notice that you're gonna have two small holes right next to your center screw. We're gonna install our bumper on the shower head side, slot inside the shower. There we go. Now when I slide this door closed, the bumper will encapsulate it and catch it right inside there. We're going to do the exact opposite. The wall jam opposite of the shower head, the bumper will go towards the outside. The next thing we're going to do is measure, cut, and install your seal. To do this, our glass will be in the way a little bit. It's not a problem. We're going to, the seal fits inside the two wall jams. So what we do is just put our tape measure right here against this wall jam and measure to the back side right here. Our measurement is 46 and a 16th. I'm gonna cut it 1 16th short of that. I'm gonna cut it 46 inches. When this installs, you're gonna have your back leg with your detail on it. That fits to the outside. Okay, what we're gonna do is just slip it inside the channel, drop it in, and then just snap it down. But before we do this, one of the things that we're going to have to remember, when we're using this door, one of the places it can leak is right between the metal of your sill and the outside of your wall channel. So I'm going to take this back out and we're going to put one more layer of silicone to seal this. Um, remember, we've already put a layer of silicone behind the wall jam. We're going to put another layer there. Now when I caulk this corner, I'm going to caulk the corner of my wall jam and then on the inside of the wall jam, I'm going to caulk it up about one inch right on the back side of here so that there will be a seal there so if any water gets in there, it will not work its way out into your house. And once again, I am caulking between the tile and my wall channel and then up the wall channel about an inch, inch and a quarter. I'm looking at it, I've got a good fit there, and so the next thing I need to do is screw down or attach my seal to my wall channel. Okay, once again, you use a number 31 drill bit. It's very important to make sure when you're doing this that you drill the hole in the right place. If you drill it up too high, you're gonna be up here where your glass is. You really wanna drill it and you come up from the curb about 5 sixteenths of an inch and just put it right there in the center of your wall channel and you just drill right there and once again we attach our metal to metal with our number six by three eighths screws And then we're going to repeat on this side. Once again, come up about 5 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we've got our header, we've got our wall jams, we've got our curb, everything's screwed down, our doors are in place. The next thing we're going to apply, or next thing we're going to install, is our center guide. What I have here is a cross section of my bottom sill. I've done it in a different color, uh, just so you get a little contrast and see what we've got here. Here's my bottom guide. This is my seal. There's a lip here 
and there's also a lip there on the seal. And it's real simple. All you do is just take it, stick it down, and then actually snap it into place, and you're gonna, it's going to fit just like that. There's a groove right here. I'm going to slide this forward actually a little bit. There you go. There's a groove and you can see where your guide fits up inside that groove and just snaps down right on top of there. I'm going to hook this on the back edge of my guide and once I've hooked it there, see it, it's stuck. I'm pulling on it right now and it won't come loose. I can still slide it down. I'm going to slide it past this piece of glass. And I'm going to use my inside glass and I'm going to put it inside that channel. At this point, you can either use your thumb. I use my nut runner. I just grab it on the inside of that guide and I just give it a quick push. And if you can hear that, it just snapped into place and it's done. All right, our next step is to install the towel bars. The towel bars are going to come equipped with a 3 8 of an inch spacer for a heavy glass. They're going to give you smaller spacers for quarter inch glass, which is what we're going to have on here. So what you want to do is take it apart. You're going to notice that we have washers and we have a grommet. I'm going to kind of put them back together here so you can see after I've changed out your spacers. Okay, what we have here, you're going to have your towel bar, you're going to have your washer, you're going to have your grommet or spacer, and then you're going to have another washer, and then you're going to have your end piece. All right, now when we apply this on the glass, um, we're going to do the outside on this one first. You're going to unscrew it. You're going to leave a washer and the grommet on the glass. You're going to put it through and put your other washer on and then you're going to apply or screw on the first side. Okay, we're going to tighten these down by hand. We don't need to really crank them at this point. And we're going to repeat the process with the next towel bar. Okay, we're going to get them hand tight like we did on the last one. Now, in your towel bar packages, you're going to get a little tiny Allen wrench. Okay, so we're going to use this Allen wrench to tighten the back side of the towel bar. There's a small hole, and you really can't see it unless you get up real close to it, but this will fit inside that hole and I can actually use it as a wrench to tighten the back side of the towel bar. And you can get them pretty snug by using this. You're going to do it on all four of these. Okay, and that's done. Now we've got the outside door going away from the shower head, the inside door going toward the shower head, and you have a completed product.